The anti-transgender pushback from conservatives has hit a new low. Republicans in Michigan are now trying to lock away the parents of transgender kids for simply facilitating gender-affirming care. So now, I'll give you the details of what that is. But first, HB 6454 would amend the penal code to state that child abuse includes when someone knowingly or intentionally content consents to, obtains, or assists with a gender transition procedure for a child. So now hold on here. What do they mean? What, what is this defined as? What's a gender-affirming procedure for a minor? We know that anyone that is 18 or younger is not allowed to get surgical procedures or anything that is not reversible. And it's not recommended by any of the groups that are in favor of gender-affirming care. So what are they talking about? Well, there's a couple of different kinds of gender-affirming care. One is the social transition stuff. Simply changing the name. Simply using the pronouns. Or allowing them to dress the way that they would like to dress. To show their outward appearance that matches their preferred gender. Okay. So, remember, this is... None of this is about surgery. You can't have that until you're 18, okay, or older. Now, there is one thing uh, that they point out in the bill, and that's hormones and puberty blockers, right? So that's part of the definition of gender transition uh, procedures, except that those are both reversible. So stop taking them. Stop being effective. That's it. Puberty blockers are reversible medications that have been long, around for a very long time that delay the onset of puberty so that trans youth can have more time to explore their identities before the permanent effects of puberty occur, and they have been shown to uh, decrease lifelong suicide risk for trans people who choose to use them, and not everybody chooses to use them. Understand that any of this care pre-18 is completely reversible so if somehow and there's a reason for that if somehow this person turns out to be the rare group of people who choose not to transition or to detransition they're able to do so and that's totally fine now that said there are statistics that i've seen about people who detransition and uh, we find that or uh, they do uh, that the social pressures uh, are actually one of the most common reasons for people to not go through a gender transition uh, in fact, in an analysis involving about 27,715 transgender adults in the United States, 17,151 uh, participants reported that they had uh, ever pursued gender affirming uh, or affirmation broadly defined. Of these, 2,242, about 13.1%, reported a history of detransition. So, okay, hey, that's a significant number. That's a real number. Of those who had detransitioned, 82.5% of them reported at least one external driving factor. And well, those that are frequently discussed are pressure from family and societal stigma. Not only that, but history of detransition is associated with male sex assigned at birth, non-binary gender identity, bisexual uh, sexual orientation, and having a family unsupportive of one's gender identity. A total of 15% uh, or 15.9% of respondents reported at least one internal driving factor, including fluctuations in or uncertainty regarding gender identity. So yes, is D, does D-trans happen? Yeah, of course. It is something that happens. It is rare, but it happens. And so you can see, though, most likely it's because of how much our society hates trans people or just being themselves. And again, a lot of the hate is because of the terrible people, uh, terrible things that people say about trans people, other predators. And yes, I do mean terrible people as well, like Matt Walsh, um, who constantly calls trans people groomers. They say, oh, they're, they're sick. They're predators. They're after your kids. They're going to they're gonna trans your kids. It's the same kind of rhetoric, by the way, that they used for a long time against gay people. So now they, they've just basically, and, and, and look, you know, years ago, like a decade ago, was anybody talking about trans people on the right? No. No, they're talking about gay people and they're saying the exact same damn things against gay people. Now, well, it's become unacceptable, unacceptable to say these things about gay people 
although they're certainly conservatives and I've showed you before that do say these things. Uh, and so now their main ire, their main target is trans people and specifically trans children to try to force them back into the closet. Now, state representative Bo, uh, Bo Lefebvre, who is not my fave, by the way, uh, is one of the lawmakers who introduced this bill. He told the Hill this, quote, people are abusing these children. The idea that we would be making potentially life-altering changes to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15-year-old kids when it is illegal for them to have sex is insane. I mean, they're not responsible enough to smoke a cigarette until they're 21. Well, nobody's making life-altering changes or that are permanent. Nobody's doing that. And by the way, why the conflation between gender and sex? Sex and gender are different. Yeah, I tend to think of it the most simplest, sex being the bits between your legs, right? Gender is how you present yourself in your daily living. And by the way, if you don't think that it's important, think about all the things that, you know, the, the way that you were perceived by society as a result of being a certain gender. You as women, their experiences, as a man, you're going to find out that they have vastly different experiences than someone like me, who is a cis male. Okay? So, this moron is conflating two different but related things. Because they, there is a relation, by the way. Um, so, now, it's also ironic in a couple of different ways. For one, this is a party that at least was pretty okay with child marriage. I mean, in Tennessee, they had passed it, and then after outrage, they decided to outlaw it again. Um, but they've also been in support of things like child labor, child soldiers. It's, uh, you know, they're also not a fan of, making, of children making decisions of what gender they identify as, but they're, they're fine with all that other stuff. Really? And again, going back to Matt Walsh, how he's talking about how 15-year-olds are so fertile. 15, 16 year olds, incredibly fertile. Why? Why are you talking about that? <clears throat> That's a really, really weird uh, conversation to have. Very strange. Now, what's worse is that these are also uh, people that consider themselves the party of freedom, wanting to lock up parents for actually, I don't know, supporting their transgender kid to get them affirming care. But see, they want them shoved so far back into the closet. They really do. And, and of course, the big issue with that is you end up having high suicidal ideation among those groups that are forcibly shoved back into that closet. They'll take their own lives. But the right wing would rather have them off themselves than to be, you know, someone who lives their truth. In fact, Equality Michigan Executive Director Aaron Knott said in a statement, quote, Gender-affirming care is medically necessary and life-saving care for transgender youth. Medical decisions belong to trans youth, their parents, and their doctors. It's true. And one more irony here. Again, the right wing that does not want famously to have government get between you and your doctor. That's what they did. That's a whole Obamacare stuff, right? They seem to really want to insert themselves between, well, people and their doctor. But women, for example, uh, when it comes to reproductive care. And, uh, and now, in this case, transgender people between parents, the children, and their doctors. All the major medical associations support gender-affirming care. It's all around the world. And, you know, I I'm thinking that maybe, you know, maybe those people know a little bit more, a little bit better than those who can't seem to understand how pregnancies actually work. And that example is, by the way, going back to Todd Aiken, who said, oh, if it's a legitimate rape, then the body has a way of shutting that whole thing down. No, that's not how it works. They have literally no idea. Should that bill pass, Michigan would become the second state to make gender-affirming care a felony after Alabama. Michigan, my state, my home, what are you doing? Don't become like Alabama. 
Seriously.